Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Ben. And we are Autosave. Welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Attack on Titan Season 3, Episode 19. Erwin, dead. Armin, alive. <laughs> Zeke, Almost alive. Dead. Zeke is alive, yes. Hanji, alive. Moblet, dead. dead. Bert, dead. dead. Reiner, alive. Alive. Backpack bitch. Ugh, alive. Yep. <laughs> well, that was last episode on Attack on Titan. We also <laughs> know that uh, Zeke has made a promise, Orang a Titan has made a promise, to come back and rescue Aaron. I think that we're, I don't know if we're right or wrong, but I'm pretty sure both of us believe there is, like, definitely relation. Yes. Especially with Zeke bringing up Aaron's father doing the same thing to him. Yeah. Uh, I'm leaning towards this is Aaron's uncle or something like that. But, I mean, you know. It we could, have no way of knowing if we're right or not unless we watch the show. It could be uncle, brother, grandson. Cousin. Cousin. Great, like, great ancestor. I don't know how the time works. Um, that being said, it seemed like Zeke n knew it, like, coming into it. That this, like, right off the bat, this interaction was with somebody he knows about and knows that it's, you know, Grisha's mm -hmm. son. Um, to the I, point of making sure to add a little anecdote of, you look nothing like your father. Yeah. I don't know. Um, the only reason, so at this, there's no evidence for this. But the only reason I'm thinking it is Aaron's brother. Aaron's brother. Because Grisha brought up his dad. And I'm trying to think, like, narratively. Could that be, like, a little shortcut? Like, Grisha's like, I'm not like my dad. And he brings up Grisha to Aaron. And I'm like, okay, so you know Grisha. You've mentioned your dad in, like, passing. <sighs> Is oh, wait, that something? Oh, okay, okay. I think you might have started that with saying Grisha twice. So I thought you were talking about Grisha when you were talking about Zeke. Yeah, I am. Okay. So I think Zeke could be Aaron's brother. Okay. Because Zeke brought up how he didn't want to be like his dad. Yeah. And he and we know that Zeke knows Grisha. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I think that that might be something. I probably not. It's out. It's like out there. But um, I asked this question at the end of last episode's intro and we were wrong, but I'm going to ask it oh, again. No. Are we going into the basement this episode? Are we going to be at the door and begin to open it? Okay. 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 So we said yes last time. Yeah. Wrong. Okay. Are we doing the countdown? Yes. Three, two, one. Yes. yes. <laughs> um part of me was like forgot that like oh yeah erwin confirmed dead because i was like oh i wonder if he's gonna be able to see it before he goes then, but this is attack on titan baby i know that's not even that's even not more a choice. reason even more reason to believe that we're gonna go to the basement in this yeah. episode because of the fact that erwin died last episode just out of reach just out of spite of and he was like erwin. literally like reaching his hand up like raising his hand just out of reach because he wasn't there he never made it. Almost. But, you know, all of Armin's words of the sea uh, definitely made it to Levi's heart. And he chose uh, chose who I wanted him to choose. I'm very interested to see Armin's reaction to waking up. Mm -hmm. I feel like if we hadn't been given that kind of uh, flashback to everyone all the scouts being told of the situation with the syringe that i would be guessing right now that armin would be very upset about it uh, but now that i know that everyone went into this situation knowing that could be the possibility and that they could have to eat reiner or Bertholdt, everyone kind of had that awareness already yeah um but i'm sure it's we remember how armin was when he first murdered someone yeah and now we're going to have him learning that he ate this guy that he was trying to save this whole time and plead with. 
So I think even if he was aware of this being a possibility, it's still going to really I, hurt. I think he's going to feel weird about it. Mm -hmm. I'd feel weird about it. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you? Like, would you technically still have the taste of this man in your mouth? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe we'll figure it out this episode. Maybe that's what's in the basement. Details regarding every weird question I have about <laughs> titans and humans. Yeah, they're all in like books in there and they're just going to all next episode. Everyone's just going to be like reading all these fun facts about titans to us. I do think like through like we've talked about it so many times. If we're going to get it uh, this episode, what's your understanding or guess of uh what's in the basement in my in my regard it's it has to be something historical and a record of it to based me, off of all the context we've gotten the past season i feel like it has to be some sort of um library of materials mm -hmm. that have been collected over the years that are similar to the book that armin's family had or um, maybe grisha's own account of what this other civilization would be what if it's just like an empty room and then there is a table at the end of the room and there's just like a diary of Grisha's account of everything he's experienced in his life. Yeah. And Titan power. I, man, it's Attack on Titan, so we never know what's going to happen. <laughs> I definitely think it's in that ballpark, no pun intended, in regards to Zeke. But uh, the only, like, big question that I can't even begin to try to answer is who did Grisha eat? And I don't know if I have any information to suggest he ate someone because, yeah, I everything else I can kind of make an educated guess, but I don't. I the Grisha, uh, all of my is, information is limited in terms of like how many people could eventually have the power of the Titan because we only know a handful of people. But Reiner, Bertholdt, Annie, Zeke—they all came from somewhere. So what if there are other people there who have this power that could be ate yeah. by other people? <sighs> That's all I have, though. I, I'm, I guess I'm ready. I don't know. I'm a little nervous now, like, thinking too. about this could be the penultimate moment of basement. Oh, just like, what if this is the time. end of the show? Basement time. Basement time. You know, like, when, like, cave. did you also have... Uh, one of those friends growing up who had like a really cool like carpeted basement yes. it was really nice and you got to go over there and you got to like open the door and then go down there and, and there play. were no spider crickets yeah it was a great place it was uh, that's what i'm env envisioning <laughs> right now Ugh. okay okay, okay. You ready yeah sweet i believe we can watch the intro now it's almost like a summary of all of the episodes that we've seen so far oh that was a good moment that happened that happened. I'm really glad we don't watch openings. I would have known exactly what was happening. Yes. It could not get. Okay. All right. It's fine. Was this Armin's experience? Was that Bertholdt? Her words were Bertholdt's to him. Uh. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my god. Not yet. Shigo <laughs> That's a lot to tell someone when they <laughs> wake up. Burden. You ate your friend and you were chosen to live over the commander of the scout regiment. The responsibility you must feel. Survivor's guilt. Mm. 
して僕に打ったんですかありのまま話せと言ったろうがお前の仲良し二人はそうは思わなかったようだぜ俺に抵抗し俺たちはどんな処分も受けます罰さえ受ければ何をしてもいいのかい最終的にお前を選んだのは俺だ俺の史上でエルヴィンの死に場所をここに決めちまったんだエルヴィン団長が死んでいいわけがないリヴァイ・レイドス・バディ・イン・アベッド僕たちは私もエルヴィンに打つ<笑>何よりそんな状況を防がなかったことがエルヴィンが注射を託したのはリヴァイでありうちは君を選んだもう何も言うまい命と巨人の力が隠されて<笑>誰に何と言われようとエルヴィン団長の代わりをですかバカなことがお前じゃエルヴィンの代わりにはなれぬ人にはない力を持っていることも確かに<笑> It's so cool to hear Levi say that ああ<笑>ああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああこうなればお互い腹をくくるしかない。私とリバイ、エレンとミカサで調査に向かう。他の4人は鍵はなくしてない。I see it. Oh my god.、Okay. It's not gonna happen. No. Right here, right now? エレン、帰ったら。地下室に入っちゃダメって何度言ったらわかるの何でダメなんだよ。Did she know what was in the basement? He was pretty close to going in the basement. I'm very Have they zoomed out and then the wind started blowing? Oh my god. Oh, that was so cool. I know. I'm. This is so surreal.、Mm -hmm. They're definitely hitting the mark with that. Nature's reclaiming it already. Don't tell me the key doesn't work. What if the basement's been unlocked this whole time and the key's for something else? It looks like a doctor's room with medicine. We still don't know what the key's for. Those look like the armor titan jars. Is there a basement underneath the basement? <gasps> I saw a keyhole. Hey, 
うん。That's smart. Are they journals? They, uh, that's what I'm thinking. Journals, diary, history. Oh my god, they're making me feel so tense. <laughs> <laughs> Open it. Not that they were completely wiped out. But to only come back with like six people. They don't have photography, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. That's I think you might lab. be right. I think you might be right. It's like explaining it to them, too. Where they have baseball. That was a really great tra transition into the outro. That, huh? I don't know if we're supposed to be watching this. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, <laughs> Are we? Sp we're already watching it. They have walls themselves. He kind of looks like Bert Holt. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, that was season three, episode 19 of Attack on Titan. I'm concerned a bit because we had, as you know, had a very uh, divisive and uh, long conversation in, uh, regarding if we should watch an after credit earlier this season. Mm-hmm. I have, we obviously stay away from everything unless we're told. I haven't been told. I haven't been told not to watch this one. And we already watched it, so, like, we can't go back. It yeah. happened. Um. What the hell? Okay. Uh, do you want to start from the beginning, maybe? Because I don't know where to start myself. Um, yeah, I don't even think I, sh I don't, I don't think I want to touch the after credit yeah, yet. Like, yeah. Even, even in this discussion, I really? don't know if I'm going to want to touch on it. Um, um, I'm not, I'm not ready to, it, it like, it, it was a little too much, like at once. I might say to, a like, thing or two process it just like, right. When we get mm -hmm. there, but, um, uh, this isn't starting out at the start of the episode, but while the emotion is still there, um, the ending of that episode that like rolled into the credits Outro. and the music, mm -hmm. it was really nice. Um, it's something I think we could say not 100% guaranteed we knew what was in the basement in that form. Like, but, like, that there was, like, that there was something to suggest and confirm that there's another society mm -hmm. of humans. I think that throughout discussions, we pieced together that that is a probable possibility. Pretty safe bet. Yeah, pretty safe bet. That being said, it's something it's something we knew, but still the delivery of it. It's something we We guessed, knew and but... we guessed and we also guessed that those people might be further in terms of their society technologically. Sure, but it didn't matter at that moment. It mattered that we are here with these characters and they are figuring it out. And this is the first this is 
think this is, it's an understatement to say this is life changing for them. <laughs> you grow up your whole life being told that you are the only people here. I mean, you're the effectively, only people that have survived. you're effectively time traveling, right? You are seeing evidence of a technology you don't have and you've never considered before. And you are going to be hearing of things that are, to you, you have no basis of you're so what right. that is. It is or like a time be. traveler. Like you're from the past and you wind up 50 years in the future and you're like, whoa, what is this? What is that? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, it was done very well. I was emotional during it myself. Like just, I could, like I was just like so caught up with the music and the way that they delivered it um so starting out at the beginning of the episode right uh just i the the image of what i believe was burt holt crying mm -hmm. was very scary but like sad it would be easy for me to understand if once you have eaten someone with the power of the titans and it has been transferred to you that you would then possibly have access to their feelings and memories even in that moment that it transferred um especially since we have a more grand example of that with the with the titan power that Aaron has you know where he can have that he has all of those memories from all of the past people with that power yeah. stored inside him it's just he can't unlock it himself and i think that uh, it made a lot of sense for me that Armin could almost feel kind of Bert Holt's feelings or energy in that time of transfer. Yeah. Um, it, I, I'm glad that we had something there. Um, and it wasn't just Armin waking up and the, like, you know, um, I thought that, okay. So one issue I have with a lot of, you can tie this to the, what I said about the ending of the episode too. A lot of issue I have with a lot of television shows or movies is uh, the hardest part, I assume, of writing television and movies, which is <laughs> the, the ending not or like the delivery of something and the delivery of a final product, right? How to cap it off. Yeah. Not even of the whole thing, but like if you want to deliver the point that Armin ate a character we know and gain power, which led him to survive further. You have to convey it and deliver that story or, or general plot in a way that's satisfying. And when it's something as big as like the most hyped up thing in any anime history, which is the key to this basement, <laughs> it is a tall tale. And I think that, uh, I think that, it didn't have to be it, it okay this is gonna this is hard for me to uh, explain right now because i'm thinking a very specific example that anna doesn't know and i don't want to spoil it in regards to other uh media <laughs> um but i'm gonna go i'm gonna take like a parallel jump to that in the sense that in an interview that i heard of an author he said that if somebody guesses your reveal your plot twist if somebody guesses the this thing happening based off of clues and hints throughout the story and you know that they've guessed it while you're still writing it you shouldn't change that twist you shouldn't change that reveal just to subvert somebody's expectations and just to go the other way so nobody saw it coming it's that difficulty in delivering this kind of thing that I think that is like cementing the show in history for me above any other media. Like it's, it's done so well how they can like convey this information to us. It's so good. I completely agree. Um, <laughs> but, uh, we had, I guess the explanation to Armin about what has happened I don't think I completely knew or had any inclination of how bad Armin was going to take this. This I, I thought that the, I was saying in the intro, I think, that the, the crux of all this, the issue with all this is that he ate Bertholdt. And then 
this discussion that they have telling Armin, the real hang-up, for Armin at least, and for a few of the other characters, is that Erwin's life was the one that that Armin was chosen over. How are you going to live up to that? The answer is like, you have to live differently. But like in this sense, I mean, you you knew how great of a man and how much everybody's strive what like rested on this person and yeah. for you to be chosen over them that's a man and to learn that it it was purely selfish for the most part obviously levi had the final decision but to choose armin's life yes he has his his merit his pros and so does erwin but the push that the two that you know, first made it happen and made Levi made like sent all of them away. They did it purely selfishly. They yeah. were like, We want our friend to live. Like, we cannot have this happen. You have to choose him. And I don't know if either of them, and they thought of Armin has so much potential. We want to see that for him. We, we don't want to lose him. And there was no thought of how Armin was going to feel when he woke up. There was thought from Levi about Erwin. Like, I think Levi actually sat and thought about it, bringing Erwin back or not, and, and truly thought about it in terms of his own selfish reasons, and then from Erwin's perspective, and then I think he made a decision after thinking of both of those things. And Aaron and Mikasa, I don't even know if they could have done that. They were, like... Their connection with Armin, their their feelings are so, were so in it. Like, Levi had feelings in it, but not to the extent that he would have pushed necessarily his, his wants over the rest of the group to the point of violence, like Aaron and Mikasa were willing to do. I don't think that Aaron and Mikasa had it in them in that moment, and they didn't need to, to really think how is Armin gonna feel and what decision would Armin make here Armin probably would have picked Erwin over himself it, it it was being selfish in the most selfless way like you're wanting to save somebody's life but for right. like I don't want to lose him reasons I think um I think what you just said is is a great segue to me saying that being selfish isn't inherently bad Correct. In what context? I well, I just mean in general, like it, it can be bad. There are definitely contexts where selfishness is bad, but I also think that it's good for self protection, preservation, definitely. and being healthy as as a person. And you need to be a little selfish sometimes, because if you just give, 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 give to everyone, or you make decisions for everyone, you are neglecting yourself. And I think that you and yourself is also important. When I'm watching, uh, like, when I'm thinking about that decision that Levi was making, right? And, like, hearing Aaron and Mikasa plead to him and, like, try to fight with him. In my own, like, uh, head, when I, like, envision... Like, when I would read, like, a manga in my free time, like, I like imagine, like, the panels playing out in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, in, in my head, how it's playing out is, like... He's like hearing this, but he's staying true to what he believes in. But what he's like, it, it's such a compelling moment in my head because it's like he's hearing these two people argue it. And he's thinking back to like his friends that he's lost mm -hmm. in like the No Regrets OVA. And it's like he's like, even though he is actively saying, I am going to deny your friend life. Like, I know what that's like. He is doing it for this greater thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know his decision in the end. But, like, uh, the characters are so well written beforehand. You can, like, envision how hard of a decision this is yeah. and really understand it. And if um you think about it from a leadership and or military perspective, when Hanji hit the nail on the head when she was like, well, you were insubordinate. Yeah. Like, that, that's true. Like, Levi was your leader. He was your captain. His decision is supposed to be the one you you go to because if you if communication shuts down there, then chaos ensues. And you know, so I mean, to me, it was just an example of there are certain people cut out to be 
leaders yeah. of other people. Like I think Jean has that um, could Quality. possibly get there in the future because I think that he could more easily easily obtain that kind of frame of mind that Levi had in this decision making process where Aaron and Mikasa are more like a doers. You know, they're more like fired up. We're going to go fight. We're going to get into action right away. And I don't know if they could like take a breath and actually kind of think of things and compare and contrast pro and con come up with strategy. I mean, that's one of the reasons they need Armin is because he's great with the strategy. Yeah. Um, Next up throughout the show is like uh, the walk through. <sighs> it was through good. History. It was a good walk through. Well, and I. Uh, another reason okay this is high key one of my favorite episodes of the entire series like i have i'm loved this episode so much Why is um that? infinite reasons infinite, i don't know name one, some of them. one of those reasons being the pacing okay like it's so well done I, at one point when we got the mid roll i thought that they were ending the episode like i was <laughs> like oh god but like everybody I assume is going to be hyped up to just be like, get to the basement, open the door, you know? But like, I think to just have jumped off the wall and teleported there. You would have forgotten everything that these are real people. It would have done a disservice to it in that way. Exactly. Walking through the town, like reminds us like everything that they've been through, everything that they had here, what's been lost. And like it, it really, it, they did not waste a second doing it. Mm -hmm. and like i'm so glad they didn't rush it and it re like i really appreciated that also how have i never thought like it's a door just break it down like what's the key <laughs> actually for you know i know i i feel so silly for thinking that especially if aaron has been given titan powers <laughs> like, why did i think he needed a key we have anything? cannons like no, this is actually like an indiana jones situation and he needed the key yeah. and like something with equal weight and then yeah, yeah then everything uh, would have been okay uh um so then we get up to like the secret secret drawer um secret obviously control. like how levi and hanji were describing the room it is something that uh, the interior police would probably see and just be like oh okay yeah, nothing's I going mean, on here if he has to be safe i mean grisha knew probably better than anyone how how dangerous of a game it was to to keep anything or to be a person that the interior police might suspect of anything so obviously having a secret place or a place that he could go that was fitting of his career that he chose i wonder if that's one of the reasons he chose to be a doctor i don't even know if he was a doctor before coming into this into the walls mm. you know like what if he chose that because he knew that it meant that he could seclude himself and he could travel around and see things it, firsthand it wasn't weird to say that your kids couldn't go into the basement because there it was unsafe and you'd be spending long hours mixing medicines yeah. like it, it was a good guys for the whole thing especially um him maybe knowing things that other people didn't know. Well, if he's a scholar, if he's an academic, if he's a doctor, you know, it makes a little sense if he's uh, maybe a little bit smarter than you or knows more. Yeah. Or he's able to fix people's ailments that maybe they couldn't fix before he got there. Do you think that that has any uh, credence to it? The idea that he did come from outside, so he might have had, like, more medical understanding and he used that? Oh, I definitely think he used it. Yeah. Uh, especially because one of the first things we hear about him is that he basically saved everyone from an epidemic. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it was like if if we're going with the fact that he's from a society that's progressed like so so much further that's almost like in the future, uh, he probably knew of whatever epidemic they were experiencing yeah. as something that had happened in history books to him It was him probably or very clear to him what it was. Yeah, like, like his parents like, oh, went through it. it as kids yeah. or something. Um, so coming up onto opening the drawer, how cool is it that there are methods of preservation within the drawer? Amazing. I Amazing. So when I'm talking this out, I understand that I'm going to sound stupid because I'm going to be saying very obvious things, okay. but it's going to help me think about it. Mm -hmm. um, when you put objects to help preserve the quality of books, 
that means you are trying to make the books last as long as possible. Uh -huh. If you are doing that, there has to be a reason, right? In my opinion, it'd be so that someone at some point in the future, near or far, would be able to read them. Mm -hmm. He also gave Aaron the key to be able to read these books. Now, did he write these books for Aaron to read at some point? Or did he write these books for someone to read at some point? Um, I think that obviously it depends on what the contents of the, of the book are. Um, but there's three of them. Yes. And they're different colors. Is it... Part one, two, three of the same story is one an autobiography, mm -hmm. another a fiction, and the last one a screenplay for uh, some ideas he has. I what? like the idea that they are focused on separate things. I, I like that idea with them being different colors. Yeah. Um, and I have to remind myself that I am thinking about and presuming what is in the books and, and I could talk for 30 minutes about all this presumption all these presumptions I have based off of this new information but all the new information was was like a note on the back of a photograph if I'm able to talk for like 30 minutes about an a single note on the back of a photograph, what am I going to do with the information within three entire books? What are in, can I, can I have physical copies in front of me? Can I read them actually? Especially with now we know how, how he will explain things. He perfectly summed up a photograph to people who would not understand how this thing was created. You want people to have this knowledge. I know that might sound obvious, but there has to be intent behind it. Why do you want these people to have the knowledge? Because there's yeah. so many po possible answers. He wanted answers. to liberate them. Hmm? He wanted to liberate them. Is that liberating them or is that... I, exactly. What is that doing? Do you, do you think that everyone would be happier with the things that you know? And so it's a, a self-guided kind of savior complex that you think that you are liberating these people from these lives of suffering and, and unhappiness when we know that generally a lot of people were pretty peaceful and happy living their life in this lie of not knowing anything. So why would you tell them at all? You know? He could have known that something was coming. He could have been, you know, not... He could have been, like, the savior complex, like I'm saying. That's not... He wanted to be the one to do this, even if the people didn't necessarily want it. So he could say, I liberated them from their ruler that had had lied to them all this time and wiped their memories. Like, you know, it could have been that kind of selfish kind of, I want that glory of that being attributed to my name. Um... Or it could have been that it was just he believed that that would be better for them. And he decided that his thoughts of what was better for everyone was the best. Um, or he knew something was coming. I think you brought up a good word, selfish. Um, Grisha, who I am 90% confirming is Aaron's brother and, sorry, Zeke who I'm 90% confirming is Grisha's son and Aaron's brother, said that he didn't want to be like his father. And there's obviously a bad taste in his mouth there, mm -hmm. which would be explained if his father left and went to a different place mm -hmm. for a selfish reason, reason, which I may be considering being... Like, I have all this time kind of assumed that he's been kicked out of this mm -hmm. area. Yeah, and now, but you're, now I'm like, you're changing is, a is it bit? his own curiosity? Is it like, his own savior complex? Maybe Did not he even hear savior. about these people and he was like, oh, I need to go there and maybe I can help them or something. No, I don't. I don't. If it was a help them thing, I think he would have brought some like walkie talkies with him or like, like, have, like, I, I think he would have flaunted the knowledge a little bit. Okay. Well, it's safe to say that he wanted to go out, at least out of curiosity. What, there's people that live like that. I want to see it for myself. Yeah. But we know that if he had flaunted anything, he probably would have been killed. Um, he was kept he brought, secret. Yeah, I know. But like, 
does having the books here with the little information we know, a picture of his confirmed past with a confirmed technology that this society doesn't have, is this like a, a emergency break when situation? Like, is it like a something must have happened, so you should be given this as a result of that happening? They were so ready and prepared there in that drawer, and he wanted so badly to give this to Aaron in that time of intensity. You know, like, he obviously at least wanted Aaron to be able to make the decision of what to do with this information. He's writing down the process of the photograph for somebody who's not used it. He, like, uh, what did he say um, for people that are patriots like he is? That's the word he used. Yeah. He described himself as a patriot. Yes, like himself, right? Mm -hmm. um. <sighs> Lives in elegance is a... <laughs> Obviously, he was looking down on how the people he came upon lived. It's a fellow patriot. Well, well it, that word fits with the time period that he seems to be coming from. He's referencing somebody within the walls, though, right? Like, I believe he is addressing someone who is probably within the walls happening upon this book. Like a scout, maybe? Or like somebody who, with that type of mindset of adventure? Or maybe he always thought he'd be giving it to Aaron. Maybe. Um, or Aaron would give it to someone else that would then be led there. I is this like a I don't know I don't know I don't know how I feel about Grisha right now is he self-serving like did he do this out of curiosity and out of some self-fulfilling idea in his head desire it if Zeke is his son does Zeke hate him so much because his dad freaking abandoned them and then went and got a wife and had another kid. Well, that's a pretty legitimate reason, but I'm trying to think why this civilization is doomed. Why the civil why this race is evil, why the civilization is evil. Um because that's yeah, the Yeah, why are they filthy and diseased and evil? Because let's like this is a lot of information, right? Mm -hmm. But how are we tying this back to the story that we've been following? Because my best guess is was that Aaron was gonna figure was gonna be was gonna be like these people are trying to kill us i'm gonna go kill them right mm -hmm. that's still the case but is the information that we're gaining now going to make aaron upset that they're living in elegance while we aren't is mm -hmm. it going to give aaron in insider information of like weaknesses is it going to have Aaron sympathize with these people? Is it going to give their these people's point of view on this inevitable like doom that will happen? Like, what is Grisha's play in the sense of giving this information to Aaron? Obviously, there has been destruction and death that I believe Grisha knew would happen before mm -hmm. these books were found. What is going to be within these books that will? Like, what's the next step? That's so, a good way so to put it. So, I guess, um, I think the best answer that we've been given from the mouth of Grisha is when he did the whole spiel with Aaron with the key and the injection, he told Aaron that, use the memories, and he also told Aaron, avenge your mother. Correct. So that's what he wants Aaron to do with this information, if Aaron finds this information, is to use it in order to fight back against the people that killed his mother. I... It's almost like I'm a locator. He's like, hey, hey, read these books. You'll be able to find the location of the people that launched That's this fair. attack on your I, society. It's just hard not to imagine a future where at least one of our characters is like, let's try to talk to these people then and figure out what, what the hell's going on. Or two, 
these people are obviously living in an advanced society. We probably have no chance at fighting them. Well, that depends on, I don't know, does the whole, I, I don't know where I was going. I was like, oh, well, we have people with Titan powers. And I was like, oh, wait, and so do they. <laughs> I still think we are lacking information. Yes. From Aaron's side. Like from the from founding Titan side. Oh, oh, okay. Definitely. Like Aaron's power side, I guess. We definitely need him and Historia to like hold hands a little bit or something. Where was Grisha in society that he knew of the founding Titan's power? Okay. Okay, I uh, I think to end it out, it has to it, at least for me has to dive into the after credit in a like in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, everybody here is wearing armbands, yep. reminiscent of some things in uh -huh. history, and we don't understand or know the reason why. There's maybe it's other. a class system. Maybe it's X Y Z. I think that everybody can make assumptions, right? Mm -hmm. um, we don't. We understand that they have, uh, what do you call them? Air, air, uh, blimps, blimps, but like airships. That's airships. what they call them. Um, that's pretty neat. I, uh, we obviously have walls of their own, but also like communication devices mm -hmm. through like sirens, um, metal gates, weapons, uh, you have to um, check through with pa your paperwork and you can't just like go into a different area of the city. Correct. And you wonder if, uh, well, one, what happened to Grisha's sister, but two, where are they running to? Does the general elegant population know Titans exist? Is the main difference between these two societies that one of them is living in ignorance and bliss? while the other one is living with the harsh reality and fighting of trying to save the world. Mm -hmm. um, is Grisha going to, in the flashback here, stumble upon a knowledge of Titans that other people don't have, which will then change his life going forward and put him in a position to learn about the founding Titan? What if Titans about this didn't stuff? exist here? Um what if uh, when Ymir said that she'd been in Titan form for like 50, 60 years, what if Grisha had spent some time in Titan form as well? That's and a good what if question. Ymir's, the place Ymir is from, the humanity that Ymir is from, it, are the creators of Titans in order to dispel of people they wanted out, people, criminals? The only thing I have to go off of it is, um, her name's Faye, uh, is if we are operating under the assumption that Zeke and Aaron are siblings, they are in a relatively quick success. Eh, that wouldn't really change anything if Zeke, if uh, Grisha was turned into a Titan for a while and then mm -hmm. awakened that um, life. Zeke is definitely a bit older, you know? Yeah, definitely. And Grisha looked very young when he came and met Aaron's mom. Yeah. Um... So just to leave it off, what what was the motivation you think? Uh, what is your best random guess at why Grisha left? Mm. At the moment, he seems like a like a, I'm gonna do something about this type person, uh, and, and also very curious. So I kind of feel like he he wanted to see what this was about. And, and these people that were living so so behind the times in this 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 place where they believed humanity was wiped out I I think maybe he thought maybe I can help them or I want to see what it's like I think he just wanted to go there maybe like a uh, oh we're told that we're supposed to kill these people I I want to see why firsthand maybe there was already the kind of um, idea or goal or goal to to wipe out Aaron's home, you know? And maybe he I mean, knew about that and he went first. Grisha did have a very unique reaction to learning about the scouts mm -hmm. and their will to fight. And he definitely seemed to admire it. But I could totally see a class of people reminiscent of the innermost circle within this world who are 
okay, uh, build up everything else. Let's focus our technology and everything we have into our own individual pleasures yes. and elegance, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, I remember when we first got that Grisha episode, uh, we thought that maybe he was the first wave of kind of reconnaissance. Yeah. So I think that could also be the case that he came to check them out. Maybe he was like, wait, 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 let's not plan to kill them yet. Let me go and survey it and see if we need to do that. You know, one thing I'm really glad about is uh, the question that was asked in the show, is this a portrait? Because right when we first saw the photograph, I wasn't, it was upside down in a little bit away. And I was like, is that a painting or a photograph? And, and we're the, also seeing it 2D. So it's like. Like I, I had the thought, but I wasn't going to be the guy who was like, oh my God, it's a camera like <laughs> like if i had no idea i mean it, my my telling sign was the white edge yeah i was like polaroid in stacks um i don't know man i i i'm really enjoying what we have but i'm i'm just i think now more than ever curious to see what's next it's our first time since the start of the series that we're like, all right, our goal was kind of like one of our biggest goals was checked off the list. Yeah. Get, get into the basement. Did you expect them to not read through the books before taking them back? No, I thought that they, I thought Hanji would be like, Oh my God, let's read all. We this. don't know if they did or not though. We don't know. I, I have a feeling right now that they were going to give them to Historia or have a big meeting with the people that, I guess are are important. <laughs> yeah. Um if you were on an airship and looked down and all you saw were just like big titans, that'd be a scary sight. Where are they yeah, taking the airship? They had to? An, air, an airship. I guess That's the implication there is traveling. that there are other societies spread across the world, right? And you're traveling between them or yeah. something? Yeah. You would they would know. That's the perfect mode of transportation if there's Titans. And it reminds me of the shot we saw of the air balloon couple that was trying to escape that we in were the like, interior police. We were like, is that Armin's parents? We thought it was Armin's parents. Um, okay, to end it out, do you want to read the mid-roll? Yeah, mid-roll. Okay, basement key. Grisha Jaeger, having come from outside the walls and thus knowing many secrets, entrusted the basement key to his son. The basement will likely reveal the mysteries of the world which Grisha couldn't mention to anyone. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> he was totally on the interior police's radar. You think? I would be surprised, especially if he was able to to heal so many people. I don't think so. You don't think so? Nah. You think they just praised him for his medical knowledge? Yeah. And, and didn't think any... Do you think they ever searched the basement? No. Hmm. I don't. I don't. You don't? I don't think many people knew Grisha was from the outside. Well, no one knew. Exactly. Except two people. But still, I feel like the interior police uh, were very uh, suspicious of anyone who seemed to, to either think differently or start teaching things that were different or have grand ideas. Yeah. I mean, it's totally a possibility. I'm just kind of picking one side. <laughs> just um, picking a side. <laughs> uh, surreal, I guess, is the only word I can describe this episode as. Um, and then even the end is surreal where only six of them arrive back. And I think all those people celebrating don't even realize that it's only six scouts. Nine. Nine? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, but yes, it is, uh, I don't know what to expect or what to, what, what's to come. I, I don't know if it's like sadness, despair, confusion, happiness. I mean, it could be all of those It could things. be, it could literally be anything. You good? Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.